All right, what's cracking, YouTube? So I thought I would not have a knife purchase before the Blade Show this year, but I lied to myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, and my wife, I guess. Yep, I uh, promised her I wasn't going to buy another knife until the Blade Show, but you know what? Shit happens. And I'll tell you a little story behind it, all right? Because this is the shit that happened. We went to Torpon Springs, Florida last week, and Leonidas was available, all right? Now, I got a couple of these guys here. Spartan Warriors and shit that I got a couple knives. I got my Medford Praetorian tie sitting up on one of these deals. And then I got another one that I've got a, another Spartan blade sitting up on. And then I finally found Leonidas here. So basically I got a Chili's, Hector, and now Leonidas. All right, that's their names. So saw this knife, all right, and I was just kind of looking around. I was like, man, I wonder what I could find that would go good with the Warrior, you know, the Spartan Warrior. And I looked at some of Spartan Blades. I seen a Horcos. I used to own a Horcos. So, yes, it's a great knife. No, I wouldn't buy it again until I bought some other things that I really want. Um, the price point on this right here is right where I like it to be. I mean, that is a very good knife. But I was looking at the cheaper version of it right after I got this guy. So once I seen it pop up on the website, it was the all black handle, cold steel, Spartan, right? I never liked that knife. I had a friend of mine owned it years ago. I put it in my hand. I wasn't impressed. You know, I was, I've always been into expensive, you know, expensive knives that use different materials and stuff as far as the handles go, ergonomics, grips, all that kind of stuff. It's always, always different, right? So I, I've always went with the more expensive side of things because when I first started out knife collecting, I had a bunch of cheap stuff, and then I got into the expensive stuff, and I got to the point where it just went to my head that all this USA-made shit was the best, you know what I mean? And I had to have it USA-made. I wouldn't accept anything else. And I, I think I changed up somewhat over the last about year and a half or so. I do still only own two knives that are made in Taiwan, one of them being the Spartan, the other one being the Espada. So I still do collect a lot of American-made stuff, but price point's what we're talking about here. All right, anyway, the black handle one, the Grivelry, I did not like it. So I did not want to buy that with the 10 AUS 10A steel, none of that shit. I didn't want it. Happened to see this one pop up on a website. I think it was uh, DLT Trading where I saw it. Selling for like $289 or $294, something like that. I'm like, fuck, you know, that's... That's kind of a steep price for a cold steel, to be honest with you. I mean, I got my Espada large for even way less than that, like $215 brand new. So with, with that 35 VN and a lot of the materials you see, plus it's polished. So I really wasn't looking to pay that much. Started looking around, bada boom, bada bing, found it on Smoky Mountain Knife Works, all right? 240 bucks, 244. So I said, oh shit, I thought about it for a day. Then I seen it was also autographed, you know, got Lynn Thompson's signature on it. Another nice touch to a knife, since I'm a collector. All right, so I say, shit, man, I might as well just get it. So I got it. Just came in the mail today. FedEx dropped it off probably about 30 minutes ago. And I am very, very happy with it. The craftsmanship what you're getting out of it and how great it's going to look when I stand it up in my uh, Leonidas figurine here is just awesome. The price point was, I'm not going to say it's perfect because I still think it's a little high, but considering what you're getting as far as size, quality, I mean, the thing's just freaking bitching. We'll go ahead and open it because I've been babbling on for four minutes already. Here we go. Triad lock, everybody's got one nice pop to it when you open these things up the g10 handle right off the back all right if you guys out there own the gravelry one the biggest difference is how this thing's contoured how the grip feels and the fact that there is no steel liners inside this g10 now there has been a lot of testing on lynn thompson and cold steel side to prove that this g10 is actually stronger than these steel liners that they were putting in this knife prior to this in the black version with the AUS, AUS 10A steel, all right? Very, very comfortable grip, man. I mean, it is contoured. Contoured like a knife should be. 
It should feel very good in your hand. The back side of this is for knocking mofos out. I don't know, you might even be able to use it as a hammer. But it's definitely made for putting in your hand, having your whole hand nicely sit inside between the handle, pound on somebody, <laughs> and then cut. All right, so, and it's a serrated S35 VM blade, fully serrated, flat grind, just a very, very nice blade. This thing will cut through all kind of shit. Don't take that literally, everybody, because I know some of you bozos out there will be trying to cut a brick in half with it, but this is for clothes, rope, you know, flesh, whatever else that you can cut with a knife, including paper. <laughs> All right? So, very, very high-quality knife. We also have in here the grip. So when you're grabbing this thing, your hand does not depress and does not have the ability to depress that lock. So this knife will never close in your hand. The blade shape is like a kukri. So very, very cool shape. You know you can chop with that blade, no problem. I forget what the weight is. Let's see. See, like about cold steel, man. They write everything on a freaking box. Look at that. 7.7 .7 ounces they're putting it at. Four and a half inch blade. So you're getting a whole lot out of this knife for $244. Compared to something like this, you're paying almost $1,000 for. Now you got a 190 thou thick blade here. You got a 150 thou thick blade on that one. Your handle's uh, 3 16 per slab. So pretty nice wide titanium handle, frame lock. Triad lock. Handle's about a half inch wide. So very, very, very well balanced in the hand. I mean, this thing's just ridiculous, man. Look at this. Very nice knife. These are serial numbered, supposedly. I have not found that serial number yet, unless that's it. I got to look it up online and see if there's another picture of one on Blade HQ or something. See if that's the model number or if it's a different number. But I do not see a serial number right now. So we'll have to look a little deeper into that. Maybe it's inside the handle somewhere. I just can't see it on camera here. But I bought that to put with the Unitas. That was my main purpose of it. I will not be carrying this knife. I've got a lot of shit like this, okay? I got two sitting right in front of me here. Got the Expendables knife from Daryl Ralph. I got it in there with his pictures, Jason Strotham's picture, and yes, this is the real custom one, the last custom version of 2021. Right before he died, he repaired this. There was something wrong with it when he sent it to me. I sent it back to him. It got fixed. It was in the mail. I called him back to thank him. Unfortunately, he was already passed. So that could possibly be one, if not the last knife that he touched in his career. So definitely a keeper for me. We've got Rambo up there at First Blood. So, you know, I, I do things like that. I've got a little bit of stuff that I collect and I put it together like this and just kind of sit it around the house, you know. My wife likes Willow Tree. I like crazy shit, so I'll stick with it. But as you can see, next to the Medford Knife and Tool, same size. I mean, it's same size lengthwise and all that stuff. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is this being almost a $1,000 knife and this being a $244 knife. I like this one a lot more as far as the grip goes. I like the blade shape on this one more. I like the power, the powerful, you know, titanium pieces. The titanium I really like. I just like everything about this knife, but I don't like it as much as I like the handle on this one. This handle just feels so good in the hand. You know, I've, I've always said to myself, and I said it on videos as well, if Medford, if Medford would make some knives with contoured handles, which he did in the past, I actually saw a Viper out there. I wish I could have that one, to be honest with you. I really want that knife. I love the Viper, but it was big and blocky. And when I saw somebody pop up on YouTube that had one that was contoured, I was like, motherfucker, <laughs> where do you get it? 
But if Medford would contour handles like this, instead of just chamfering the edges, man, I'm telling you, I would, I would be that much more looking towards the direction to just keep buying Medfords. Unfortunately, he makes a very good quality knife. There is minor hot spots in this. You know, these are really designed for hard use, military application, shit like that. In most senses, you're going to have gloves on doing that kind of work. So it's not going to affect you in any way if you're wearing your gloves. It's just when you're when you're pocket carrying that thing down the street like I do. That's this is my number one. I go to that knife all the time. I'm always carrying it. But when you carry it around and you pull it out of your pocket, you feel a little bit of hot spot. You're like, man, dude, sometimes it makes you want to take it out to the fucking grinder in the garage and take it apart and just radius or, or round it off yourself, contour it yourself, you know. But I also don't want to avoid the, the guy's warranty if something happens in the future and I need to use it. For some reason, strange ass reason, it breaks, you know, and I got to prove that it's their fault and not mine. I'm not going to be able to prove that if I fuck it up. But anyway, that's... I like this handle a lot more is what I'm saying. This thing fits really good in the hand. Very good. And like I said, I did not like that cold steel knife years ago. I absolutely hated it. Like the name of it, but I never liked the knife. And this is a very, very fine quality knife right here in front of me right now by cold steel. So if you guys are up in the air about that one, there's a limited number. I don't know limited to what number. It could be limited to frickin' 10,000. It could be limited to 50,000. It could be limited to 100. I, I don't know. All I know is the box is signed. The knife's got his signature on it, etched in, which I could really care less for, but... And it's a limited edition. So that's, that's my biggest thing right there. Anyway, everybody, peace out. Hope you enjoy the video. If you're going to buy one, buy one. If not, that's all right, too if you enjoyed the video. <laughs> All right, they